Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Logical Nonsense Podcast. Today we have Kelda Music on. She is a actress as well as a musician. Kelda Music, how are you doing today? I'm amazing. How are you? I'm doing good. You know, every day that I get to record a podcast, I'm happy. Uh, this is what I love doing. So very excited to have you on. You have a very interesting resume. Um, have been a part of many different things in your life. So definitely want to have you on. And yeah, so let's introduce yourself. Who are you? Uh, what, do you what do you do? And what is your mission? Yes. So um, I'm Kelda Music, uh, recording artist, actress, talk show host, um, entrepreneur. And I recently launched my line of berets called TAMS. So I guess you can put me in the fashion boat as well now. Um, yeah. <laughs> I like to look at myself as this multitasking entertainer that doesn't that doesn't just stick with one thing, you know. Because when you yep. stick with one one project or one look or whatever, it's kind of like you'll get overlooked in the future. You know what I mean? Because okay, that's yeah. all you do. <laughs> yeah, so, no, so, you like uh, to diversify yourself and. And yeah. playing many different avenues and many different worlds. That's super cool. Definitely, definitely. Thank you. Yeah. And my my whole, you know, my whole end goal is to just keep doing what I'm doing. You know, um, if you could if you have other entertainers out there that you see doing music, film, TV, and a whole bunch of other stuff, you know, merchandising, it's like, well, I can do that too. You know, it might be on the independent level, but I'm still um, enjoying doing what I love and I've had a lot of success doing it. That's awesome. No, that's super awesome. It sounds like you're very passionate about what you do. Yes, definitely. Definitely. been doing this since, um, you know, I was, a, I was a child and it stuck with me. I never wanted to do anything else. I couldn't see myself do anything else. You know, I tried giving school uh, a chance and, you know, tried going to university, doing the whole, um, you know, on campus thing. Uh, but um, I was like, no, this industry is calling me. <laughs> I like that. Well, that is a great segue into talking about your journey of how you got into the music industry as well as the acting industry. Yeah. So um, the music industry started for me when I was around 16 years old. Uh, I was in high school and it was during the time when all the pop groups were out, you know, Britney Spears, Backstreet Boys and Sync, all those guys. And yeah, yeah. it was during the time where, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was during the time where um, all the labels were looking for more pop artists, even if they don't become success, like, you know, the artists I just named, but they were just looking to have those artists on their roster. So yeah. Um, I was on AOL at the time and I saw a, um, I saw an ad, uh, it was Columbia Records. They were looking to put together a girl group. And so um, I took a few days off of school. I was in high school and my mom bought me a round trip ticket to LA. I stayed out there with my manager at the time and uh, she drove me to my audition for Columbia Records. And I, I remember I just brought this like crappy song with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Like, you know, like, I mean, now I know it's a crappy song, but back then I didn't. I was like, they're going to love this, you know. And um, I performed in front of two gentlemen. And I remember I remember one of the gentlemen, one of the a &Rs, he was tapping his foot like song, you know. And I was like, OK, I got this. First thing they asked me when I was done have you ever had any vocal training? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, yeah. wow. Dang. Yeah. And I They're was brutal. Like, yeah, yeah, they are, you know? And um, I was like, no. And this was when I was trying to sing. I was trying to sing yep. pop music and stuff. And um, I just remember the experience was cool. I actually got to go inside Columbia Records in Santa Monica um, across from across from Santa Monica Records. Um, they were doing a J-Lo and Jessica Simpson release party because it was when they first came out with their albums. Wow. And so wow. I was like, let me just walk across the street then, you know, but I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that's what sparked the whole music thing. And from there, I just kept 
I just kept going. I kept creating demos. I kept doing cover tracks. And then um, eventually I started writing poetry and poetry led to writing hip hop music. And from there, that's when um, I signed with Squad Music Group in 2005. I released my first album called Shut Up, Listen. And the rest is history. <laughs> Heck yeah. Heck yeah. So where are you originally from? Originally from San Jose. Okay. So yeah. so you're still from California. Just got it. Okay. Yeah. So I was yeah. wondering that because you said round trip. So I wasn't sure if we we're talking like, you know, cross country trip to oh, Columbia yeah. Records or where we were talking, how big of a trip you, your, uh, your mom made. <laughs> yeah yeah no it was just the bay area to la you know pretty simple. yeah yeah no that's that's really interesting was um was there like a big line when you went to the columbia records and an audition was it like a few people like i'm imagining in my head right now i'm, I'm picturing like american idol i don't that's the only thing i can picture because obviously i you know i have zero recollection of what this looked like yeah yeah no um so it was by appointment only, audition time only. So when oh. I came there, I, if anything, I felt like I was the only one that came. It was 7 p.m. at night and no one was there. So yeah. I, yeah, I don't think they were doing the long lines wrapped around the building and just no. anybody. Like you had to, you know, put in an application, you had to qualify and they had to pick you to come out and audition. Gotcha. So, um, yeah, it, it was a process. It wasn't just for anyone, you know, they picked the deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through. <laughs> I got you. I got, you. how did you get into the acting industry? Yeah. So, um, the acting industry, I've always been in showbiz since I was a kid. Um, always, um, had a, a talent agent always was in a photo shoot, had headshots, comp cards, um, going on auditions for like Fruit Loops, Adidas, um, Toys R Us, all of that. Um, at one point, I was gonna be sent away to New York to a boot camp, but um, you know, my parents decided not to do it. Not to mention it was a lot of money, but um, I was just getting my feet wet um, in the industry as a kid, and as I got older. Um, it was a little difficult for me. It was challenging because I had braces at the time yeah. and, you know, they weren't looking for a lot of, you know, black kids to be in projects, um, mm -hmm. again, let alone with braces. And you had to also have a good GPA and mine wasn't the best. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, as I got older, I just started finding my own gigs, um, I, I started, you know, um, during a point in time, you know, the the industry changed a little bit where you could start booking yourself for auditions and you can start signing up with casting direct casting agencies on your own and receiving breakdowns from them instead of, you know, waiting to be signed by an agent and filtering out if you meet the criteria and all that, all the other politics that go with it. I started booking myself and gosh, like the biggest project that I've ever done was First Date, which is now streaming on Hulu. No, I, um, that's a really interesting process that you, because like that whole industry, like I really have zero clue about. And I think a lot of people really don't know that whole world of how to get acting gigs nowadays. Um, yeah. Like I think yeah. the big thought is like, you know, you have a huge agency and then but it sounds to me like it's a little bit more accessible. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. And then you have social media and social media has like, for example, Facebook has so many casting groups, actors groups, film groups, any really any kind of group. But there's so many groups out there that when you join, they post casting breakdowns and you could just respond right then and there with a headshot or with a link to your bio, your website. You really don't have to jump through hoops anymore like you normally would. And to be honest, at this point, the only time an actor should get an agent is if you're profitable, right? If yeah. you're 
in a lot of projects that are making you money. And mm -hmm. same thing as a recording artist, you know, you shouldn't sign with a label or or a t or a booking agent shouldn't sign you unless you're at a profitable, um, um, you know, phase in your career where you're you're making money on your own and you really don't need these people, but you need them for the bigger resources and maybe you know bigger funding. But if you're profitable on your own, you could do this. Uh, you know, for the rest of your life. Like, it's almost like being an independent contractor, you know, you work for yourself. Is it is it cool for you, though, to see kind of that journey of it not being so accessible to now it being, I wouldn't say like easy, but definitely more accessible and um, I guess easier to get to the right people? When I was a teenager, I would spend so much time on the internet looking and researching for, uh, people to help me and, you know, even got ripped off a few times. Uh, and so it's like, there was so many man hours that went into that from, you know, crafting emails, researching who the right person is, building a relationship with that person, you know, to where now it's like, <laughs> you just join a group on Facebook or you just look up casting and, you know, casting descriptions on Google and boom, it's right there in front of your face and then also um hollywood has made it easier they have um different software um different kinds of software that you can use to submit your uh your headshot and resume which makes it a lot easier and then there's different kind of websites where um all you have to do is upload a, a reel of yourself and you instantly submit it to the casting director without even having to travel and you know audition for them live so um it's it's more a major more change. yeah yeah exactly yeah so it's a major change but you know I, i'm not mad I'm, I'm glad i went through the challenges that i did and you know understanding of the business before it got to this point definitely you feel like it probably made you more um I guess, stronger or appreciative of the old processes? Yeah, yeah, yes. Because, uh, again, I was, I I didn't, like, participate in any school activities or, or go to prom or anything. I just had my mind focused on making it as an artist, actor in the entertainment industry. And I, all I did was, you know, whenever it was lunchtime, break time, recess time, I'm always in the library on the computer doing research. I'm not like with the other girls hanging out, looking at boys and, you know, gossiping and all that other yeah, stuff. Yeah. I was literally in the library just looking up record labels, booking agents, casting directors. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah, sick. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Um, you're dedicated to your craft. I like it. Um, how would you describe your own music, Drana? I, I heard you say a little hip hop. I was listening to your music before this podcast just to like, you know, get a feel for, you know, what your music's like. I, I like to do album reviews and um, oh, okay. explore like, you know, different genres of music. So I'm, I'm mostly focused in hip hop, um, hip hop rap world. And so I try to focus in there. But um, yeah, I guess. How would you describe your music genre to others? Yeah, straight up hip hop, straight up hip hop. Um, all seven of my, okay, well, six of my albums, all just straight hip hop. Um, you know, again, when I started writing poetry, that's what led to creating rap music and being able to know that I feel comfortable doing this because I sound good doing this and others think so as well. So, um, yeah, um, all I've been doing is making hip hop music now, you know, recently, um, just because there's other music that exists now, right? We got EDM, Afro tech, you yep. know what I mean? And so much more. So now I've kind of incorporated that a little bit into my music, but yeah, not so that. much. Yeah. 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 So it, it's a little different sound, but a lot of artists are doing it. You know what I mean? Like no one's just sticking to mm -hmm. one genre anymore, even though that's what they are. They're still dabbling into other genres to enhance their sound and to expand their audience. And that's exactly what I'm doing. 
Yeah, I feel like a lot of artists right now are experimenting and dabbling in many different genres within their own. I mean, this is a classic example, kind of generic, but like you look at Tyler the Creator. I don't know if you're a fan or not, but mm -hmm. I mean, he dropped mm -hmm. he dropped basically a pop album in the hip hop world and got a Grammy for like best hip hop album. So it's like obviously people are experimenting it's what people are doing you're dabbling in multiple different genres and i think um people like to show their diversity in their own music so definitely yeah. cool that you are uh, also showing your diversity in your music um yeah when it comes to your music and your process what does that look like yeah so um you know i i try to stick with maybe two to three producers that I work with on each album project. And for me, it could go either way. I listen to the beat and I like, I let the beat write itself. Yep. Or I already have a concept in mind with a beat that I developed in my head. And I direct the producer as he's producing it, what instruments to add and kind of just how to structure the song. So, again it could go either way it's just really and that's the whole cool point about being an artist is because you're being creative mm -hmm. you know what i mean um, not every process is the same exactly not every process is the same and so um for the most part um i i kind of let the beat write itself sometimes because if, if you hear a dark beat you're not going to want to put something light over it and and you know be happy you're just kind of like okay this is what kind of beat it is well, okay, this song's gonna be called No New Friends. This song's gonna be called, you know, I don't F with you, whatever. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. It puts you in that mood. So um, yeah, that that's pretty much my creative process, my writing process, and then jumping in the studio and doing what I gotta do. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like the the hip hop world, especially in the women's world, is increasingly expanding which is super cool to see i mean you think of the early days you know you had like missy elliott and um lauren hill mm -hmm. um i mean the list goes on right mary j mm -hmm. blige like the list goes on and mm -hmm. now we're starting to kind of transition who would you say you like to model after um when it comes to music or do you feel like you have your own sound you don't model after anyone i really admired the brat and left eye from tlc okay and tlc i like that yeah 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 like they both of those artists inspired me to tell myself hey you know pick up where they left off you know and mm -hmm. carry carry the legacy but you know put your own spin on it um but those two right there they're they're my favorite artists and they both um, are the reason why I'm doing this today because they they didn't stick to just one script of being a, a yeah. female rapper. They rapped as if they were a male, you know, just from mm -hmm. a female perspective. Absolutely. So, yeah, those two right there. That's awesome. Well, those are that's a great selection to model after for sure. So. Um, what is your favorite project you've made and why? I would have to say the Diva TV album. And um, that was uh, released in 2010. But the reason why that was my favorite album is because I got to collaborate with all the established Bay Area artists here oh, in, awesome. in San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah. And um, one of the major collaborations was uh, Numskull from the Loonies. You guys know I got Ooh. five on it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, I have a story yeah. for that in one second. So, ah, okay, yeah. Um, we we created a track called "Excuse Me," and um, uh, unfortunately, we didn't do a video for it. But um, you know, I still work with Numskull to this day. You know, uh, I um help him a little bit with bookings and so forth like that. So it's like a artist business collaboration, artist to artist collaboration. But um, yeah, the Diva TV album has to be the best. That's where I had all my favorite producers work on the album, all the artists that I wanted to collaborate with, great uh, uh, concepts, subject matter, lyrics, everything. Well, that sounds like a very 
unique process. I'm sure that was super fun to work with all the Bay Area artists. Are you still in contact with a lot of them? Oh, yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, like I, I see a couple of them still performing at events. And uh, I'm just like, damn, you know, you're you're going, you know, there's nothing stopping mm -hmm. you because the thing is, you just got to look at this as it's not a business or an industry anymore. It's it's an art. It's it's a, yeah. a love. It's it's a hobby that you just want to keep doing because it's an outlet for you, you know, and you're Absolutely. good at it. So, yep. um, yeah, like that's why I'm like, man, I uh, I support all the artists here in the Bay Area. Like, keep doing you. I'm gonna keep doing me, and who knows? We'll all circle back to each other yep. one day, one time, and you know. Yeah. Are you so are you actively like doing gigs and like doing like concerts locally, uh, nationally? Th this year so far, I've, I've kind of uh, slowed down a little bit um, just to focus a little bit more uh, on the music. Uh, but yeah, I've been performing everywhere. Um, you know, I performed in Tokyo. Uh, oh, when awesome. I, yeah, when I toured with r &B singer Lloyd. I um, performed throughout the Caribbean, Barbados, Antigua, um, St. Martin, um, opened up for Jock Cure at the police stadium in Antigua. Um, and uh, recently I went to Switzerland and oh, did wow. a few shows there, um, as well as a couple meet and greets with promoters and um, fashion labels to yep. discuss the berets. So, um, yeah, performing for me, I, I've been doing that for so long. Like people always tell me, you're a natural. Oh, my God. And then also I've been hosting events, too. I've been yeah. producing fashion shows because of my berets. And I've been including my fans, my customers, and anyone who wants to be a model could walk, you know, on my on my runway. And I'm hosting and performing. And so it's just like I opened another door for myself. and. Yeah. Yeah, performing is awesome. That's is cool. yeah, that's super cool. I love that you done international too. I'm sure like seeing all those cultures is probably very interesting, especially being um a US artist for most of those. Yeah. I mean, they they covet that kind of stuff, which is crazy to me. They're just um they're just really appreciative. You know what I mean? They're mm -hmm. they're appreciative for you having the guts to get on stage to entertain everyone um and, and the fact that you're making music you know what i mean they're like yep. they really have an understanding of what you're doing and they're just grateful to to just see you there so you so is that a different would you say that's different than performing in the u.s yeah in the u.s i will say because of politics you know we're we're used to the stars and celebrities yeah. And so it's kind of like, oh, well, if you don't have a collaboration with this artist, if you're not signed to this label, if you're not managed by so and so, yeah. then the who are you? The politics of who you're signed to. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I'm just kind of like, well, either you're going to listen to a new artist because as a music lover, that's what you do, whether it's yep. a major label that puts out a new artist, you're going to give them a chance. Mm -hmm. So you should be giving independent artists the same chance. You know what I mean? Yep. And now, thanks to, yes, all the online tools, AI and social media, we're able to kind of force our music out there into um, people's ears. And yep. now you have people who are giving you more of a chance than criticizing you. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the, I don't know, the imbalance between performing out here in the U.S. and overseas. It's just, you know, out here, it's, it's just... It's just a lot of politics, but over there, if you create art, you create art. This is what you do. Yeah. And we love you for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so they're more appreciative for the actual content of the art, whereas yeah, no matter it's more. What, yeah. yeah. It's no more political, you like you said. It's more like, oh, you're not this big name, which, I, like, I totally see that because I think we overrate certain music just because of a name, right? Like, it just happens. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean. So it really does. And and we we you know out here we we look at status, you know what I mean? Oh, like, definitely. Definitely. You can act like we don't, but like I just said like if you don't if you're not a big name, like you're not getting paid attention to by 
by certain people. Certain people won't even give you a chance or a click of a play. Right. So. Right. Yeah. Yep. It's exactly how it is. So, you know, my word of advice to, you know, all the artists out there, invest in yourself. And mm -hmm. that's really the only way you're going to get heard. You know what I mean? And yeah. when I say invest, I'm, you know, I'm not just talking about money, but I'm talking about um, taking the time to network and go to events and network with people, even if you're not performing there. You know what I yeah. mean? Um, you, you just really have to believe in yourself. And people see that. If you believe in yourself, they're going to believe in you, too. Definitely. Definitely. I think like that comes with I, I said earlier, you're a very passionate person. I don't like I don't think you're getting as far as you have if you're not passionate about it, because at some point, you know, if you're an independent artist and I'm sure there were times, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure there were times where it felt like you weren't getting the attention you wanted. And so mm -hmm. that passion drove you and like really, like you said, investing in yourself probably also um, kept you going and, and yeah. striving. Yeah, definitely. And then, you know, just seeing others on the come up uh, yep. is motivating, too, because it's just like, oh, wow, you're still you're still doing this or you like doing this. You know, being in the entertainment industry is it's, it's a different industry. It's not guaranteed as far as no, the, the talent aspect, you know, working behind the, you know, working behind uh, the scenes. That's different. Right. That's, you know, if you're working in marketing pr promotions or whatever that that's that's something that is involved in every industry right but when yep. you're trying to become the talent in this industry it's very very competitive and it's like a lottery you know yeah. either you you make it or you don't or you go as far as you want to and you leave it there without trying to become a celebrity but just someone who's getting paid to do this for a living yeah, absolutely. So I told you I have a loonies story. So I got to yeah. go back to that before I just forget about it. So yeah. in a previous interview I had with a an Australian music journalist as well as um, he was a hip hop artist as well. Um, wow. He when he was a music journalist, he um, hung out with uh, the loonies in an Australian club and in the early 2000s and he had a crazy story about them at a club and yeah it was just super cool so Whoa. you're the second person that has wow. met or worked with the loonies on this that podcast. Cool. so I don't know what's going on with the loonies but somehow they really like this podcast I don't know what's going on <laughs> yeah right really well we need to get numbskull on here he would love to be on your yeah. podcast he's, he's hella yeah chill. No, that'd be fun that'd be super fun numbskull if you're if you're listening right now I'm Hit me up. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. So let's transition into what, in what ways are music and acting um, similar? Uh, what's similar is, again, they're both competitive. Um, from the artist's point of view, being a creator, you have to memorize a lot of your content you have to transition yourself into this character that you're portraying before your audience. So yeah. you know, in acting, they hand you a script, a monologue, you have to become that person. Music, you, you're you handed a beat, you write to it, you have to become that song when you perform it. You know, again, if, it's, if we're talking about a, a dark song, it's not about you performing all happily on stage, like, ah, yeah. you know, you gotta be emotional, kinda... yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? You have to feel yourself. And that's the whole part about being a creator. Like, it's funny, funny thing is in the future, we won't even be called actors, actresses, models, singers, rappers anymore. We're just gonna be called creators because that's what that's all it is, is creating it's just a art. Melting pot, you're saying, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, to me, they're both similar because you really have to believe in what you're reading, what you're saying, what you're doing, and how you're relating to your audience, which is most important. I love that. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Um, I guess I think it would be hard for – I've never really made that parallel, but it definitely makes sense because I think about 
people who have made emotional albums and i guess my assumption is oh they're always going through that but i guess if you're telling a story which usually in an album if it's a good album right and cohesive mm -hmm. you are telling a story um sometimes you gotta you gotta go to those emotions that you not necessarily are feeling in that moment but maybe you once did yeah yeah no uh, big cool. time like it was so funny um a while ago i made uh I made like a hip hop R and B slow emotional sexual track, but yeah. I remember before I went in the studio to go record that, um, I got upset about something that was supposed to happen and it didn't happen, and so I'm just like, oh, I don't want to go in the studio today. I'm not ready to get in that mood. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when I went to the studio, you know, it, the beat came on and you just fell into that zone. Like, okay. Yeah this is how i have to present myself right now on this record no matter what other feelings you have this is how you have to present yourself right now um on this record so um everything's just about feeling it and vibing with everything as you go and not being you know so judgmental on yourself um just really just believe in what you do and uh and others will believe in you too. Absolutely. And so that realm of like getting in that zone, I'm assuming mm -hmm. that was something you brought into acting as well. Oh yeah, most definitely. You know, it's just like when you're reading commercials or whatever for, you know, cereal or electronics, whatever, you know, cell phone companies, mm -hmm. you know, you have to put on a happy face because you want to sell the customer. You know, you want to, you want them to feel the same way as you do, or, or just like when you watch a lot of influencer videos on social media, right? If someone's telling you how to, you know, grow your Instagram followers or just overall increase your social media following, they usually have a happy face and yeah. they're, they, they turn into a salesman. They're trying to like sell you what, what, you know, what they do, what they like, how it's helped them. And that's kind of the way you just have to apply the energy, right? Like yep. based on product, based on the script, based yep. on the lyrics, you just, you apply your, your, you just come out of the cloud with, you know, this new feeling. And when you apply it there, you become that person. So definitely in acting, it's, it's the same thing. I love that. I love that. Speaking of acting, let's describe your role in Hulu's first date. Yeah, so um, I I played Mike's mom, and it, it was just so funny playing someone's mom because you know I'm not a mom, and I still look at myself as a big kid. <laughs> yeah. So, to play someone's mom, I'm like, don't you really like have to have that kind of you know feeling or experience or whatever but yeah. uh, it was it, it was fun though and um towards the end of the movie I, I didn't know i didn't really expect to do what i was gonna do but i'll leave that up to you guys to watch it um but i love uh, the promotion yeah. there huge promotion i love that go watch <laughs> it yeah yeah you know so uh this first date on hulu i'm playing mike's mom and uh, the the whole uh, story behind the film is, um, you know, um, Mike is my son and my husband and I, we take a trip somewhere. We leave Mike, to, you know, by himself to the house, kind of like Ferris Bueller type of thing. You know, yep. and we're like, hey, you know, if you decide to have sex, the condoms are up there. If you want to have a party, the liquor's over there. But, you know, protect yourself and all these areas, whatever. And... Uh, you know, he ends up going on a date and things just go to the left. So everything that you could imagine going wrong went wrong when he thought everything was going to be smooth because his parents were gone and he had the house to himself. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a pretty it's a pretty good film. And um, I'm, I'm actually proud to be in it. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love when you're you're proud of your work. So good for you. Um, yeah. how was yeah. working with Hulu? I mean, it's, it's crazy. The world we live in where like mm -hmm. the biggest channels now are Hulu, Netflix, right? Yeah. HBO max, like, et cetera. 
How was working with Hulu? Yeah, so um, so the film originally premiered at the Sundance Film Festival, and from there it got picked up by uh, one of Mark Cuban's subsidiary companies, film distribution yeah. companies, and that's how it got on Hulu. And for a while, um, the film was actually trending for the the first entire month that it appeared on there. Wow. But then when Adam Sandler's film came <laughs> onto Hulu called uh, Adam. Days, <laughs> Yeah, that that pushed our film down. So we were getting like a good look and lots of views and you know streams, but then his film came and it was like, okay. <laughs> next, next. But um <laughs> It's pretty cool that Hulu does work like that. You know what I mean? Where they give your independent feature a chance to be seen by the masses. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Because all these networks have their own built in audience, but you know, Hulu or, or like you said, Paramount, Netflix, Disney, they still have more of an active audience to where Definitely. they're pushing for new content. Mm -hmm. So are you and a fan of the, the streaming culture? Um, that yeah. we have right now? Yeah, I am. I am. Uh, at first, I was kind of against it, uh, you know, musically. But yeah. from a fan's point of view, it's cool because it's like the music is in the cloud and you have access to it whenever you want it. Yep. Um, no need to download and and put more storage on your computer or or iPhone. Um, no need to get extra storage devices to store everything. Um, you just have access to it on any platform. And and yeah, and the same thing with uh, film and TV. You know, just ha you can having them. on demand. Yeah, yeah. And and really, it, it's it's the most genius thing that has ever happened to the industry is streaming it's yeah it's pretty it's a good idea <laughs> so it sounds like you were hesitant at first what 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 about it were you hesitant with well now yes from um an artist standpoint of view it's like okay well how are we getting paid and yep. we're technically taking a pay cut you know because when we were selling cds or even yep. um people downloading on iTunes, we're still collecting a, a decent amount of money from that. But, you know, with streaming, it's a little cut in half and, you know, everything has to go by how many seconds or minutes of streaming that you're receiving. And that will determine how much you're getting paid, which is kind of like, you know, yeah, I've gone through this before. If I released an album, you're buying the whole album for sixteen, seventeen, ninety nine, and I'm getting my cut. The labels getting their cut, and that's it. But now it's streaming. It's kind of like you know things are are measured a bit, and yes. um, there's a lot of statistics involved that you have to look on the back end. Um, and you know the cool thing about it though is there's so many streaming platforms that you know collectively you're you're gonna earn what you've earned before when selling cds or yep. you know itunes but it's still just it hits you at first when you're just like okay well who's the biggest streaming platform and who pays the most you know what yeah. i mean yeah. so um yeah yeah that that you know that created a little i don't know Havoc. at first yeah it's interesting. I mean, it's a conversation that keeps coming up just because like it did change both the music industry, the film industry. I just feel like it changed so much um, in the entertainment business as a whole, um, even the way we promote things. Um, I think about, you know, it used to be you waited in line, right, for to go listen to a debut album or go watch a movie in theaters. And now it's like... Mm -hmm. Can just wait at home, you know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe have some ice cream. Listen to, I mean, do whatever you want, right? Like in the lounge of however you want to listen to it. But it also, yeah. I think, has changed listening habits too. Because I don't, 
know how many people are listening to entire albums. I think a lot of people do skip through albums, which kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when you bought a CD, you were forced to pretty much listen to the whole CD and give yeah. it a chance, right? So yeah. that's that's my biggest complaint about it is I think people aren't giving a album the entire chance like they used to. Um, right. But that's also right. probably the music nerd in me, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but that's, you know, that it's good to be a, a music nerd. You know, you're like a philosopher of music. You want to embrace this artist by listening to everything they've worked hard for to create into this album project. You know, Absolutely. and that's how you're able. Yeah, and that's how you're able to, you know, give an honest opinion as far as, oh, is this album trash? Oh, this album was tight, yeah. you know what I mean? And yep. um, uh, nowadays, artists, we're marketing singles like their albums. We're not even- No, for real. Marketing yeah. Albums anymore. Yeah, you know, unless you're, you're major, you know what I mean? Where you have, you know, over 10 million fans that are anticipating on hearing your album because of who you are, but, for the most part, we're all releasing singles and treating that as album campaign itself, doing, you know, multiple videos for one single and um, different, different marketing tactics around it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And from there, that just builds up for the next single, then the next single. And then again, depending on what level you're on, you could drop an album. But yeah. it's really all about singles right now. Well, that's an interesting point you bring up too, because it almost feels like, um our attention spans just keep getting smaller and smaller because everything keeps is so much at ease right so we have everything in yeah. our, the, our fingertips so we want things fast we want new things and so the singles thing is interesting to me because it's like we used to release like put a ton of promotion into albums right because there's all this information we still do like i'm not saying like you know albums aren't a big deal but they know that the singles will perform well for people yeah. because they can just listen to that one song exactly and then like we said with the whole streaming era right like yep. boom there's a song you're looking for you have access to it in the cloud and that's that you don't have to worry about going through a full album you know what i mean um yep. and, and 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 i'm not mad at that because you know from an independent artist standpoint of view it does actually help you financially because now yeah. you're like, okay, I don't have to create several different, you know, videos and and different mm, marketing concepts for each song. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yep. It's like I could just roll with this one song and build around it and take off from there, you know. And and that's why you know how you have one hit wonders sometimes, yeah. right? And you know, for them, it's kind of like that they, they were before their time, you know, hey, I'm gonna mm -hmm. just drop this song and it'll take off and I don't have to drop another song again. I don't even have to make an album. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. yeah, it's crazy how the game has changed. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. All right. So you talked a little bit about hosting. You've hinted at hosting some shows. Let's let's dive into that a little bit more. Yeah. What are the shows you host and what do those shows look like? Yeah, so uh, when I was first getting my feet wet in the rap game, uh, I relocated from San Jose to Oakland, which is about, you know, 40 miles away. Um, and in order to promote myself, because there were no female rappers that came out at the time, uh, the game was really dry when it came to female rap artists. So I created a little uh, reality show called Diva TV. And it aired on like 26 public access stations, which are, you know, local stations that, you know, you find that are free. And it used to be me and my business partner walking around with a little camcorder and I have this little fake mic and we're going to, um, we're going to hip hop shows. We're backstage interviewing artists. And I put a lot of people on TV, even if it was just local through public access, I put a lot of people on TV. And from there, as you know, my music took off, I decided to start a talk show called Diva Talk Tonight. And that was an entertainment variety show where I would interview guests in the in the entertainment industry, just like, you know, Jimmy Fallon, uh, Jimmy, 
all both Jimmy's and the other guys. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I was I was um, interviewing uh, people in the entertainment industry, and then we would have like comedy skits in between. So it was a little bit like Saturday Night Live meets Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel. You know what I mean? And uh, I was broadcasting on Coffee TV. And now Diva Talk Tonight is on Tubi. So you could actually go on Tubi to watch um, the 12 installments that we have. Um, But I I, I did that for networking purposes um, and to also just support other up and coming talent. Uh, Mm -hmm. But most of all, the networking out of it was great because if I had someone on my show, the next thing you know, they're calling me to be in their film or they're calling me to model for them or they're calling me to be in their play. You know, just it's all a collaborative type of thing. But um, yeah, Diva Talk Tonight is on Tubi. So make sure you guys watch that. Absolutely. Uh, It sounds like you're big on community and like bringing the people around you, like people who are in similar um, fields as you up as well um i guess like why is that why why do you want to bring up other people around you and that kind of thing yeah you know it's kind of like you know you start small and you have the community that helps you rise to the top yep you get to the top and maybe you know later in life you fall off yeah where do you go back to you go back home, Community. you go yeah. back to exactly where you started. So that's why I like to bring the community together. And I'm doing it through, you know, music, TV, film, fashion. I'm giving people their first acting opportunities. I'm, you know, putting people on, on Tubi and uh, Amazon Prime. And for me, it's just like those same people that you're working with are going to have your back in the long run. And that's exactly what I need as an independent artist and as an independent brand. You need as you need as many people as possible that's going to support you. And the best way to do it is to make it beneficial for them. And mm-hmm. that's how I do it. I extend opportunities. I have actually my own little um, Facebook chat group where I have over a hundred models, actors, singers, and we just post opportunities all the time for each other. Like, hey, hey, this fashion show is going down. They're looking for models. Here's the email, apply. Or, hey, there's an open mic showcase going on. You know what I mean? And then the events that I produce myself, I'm booking other artists to perform. I'm, you know, booking other models to walk. I'm giving um, the non-traditional model who will never have a chance of really modeling the way she wants to, but I'm giving that person an opportunity to walk on the runway and feel like a model for that night or that Mm -hmm. day. You know what I mean? So um, it's really just becoming a a machine yourself and just expanding your arms everywhere to everybody in any way you can. And it'll, it'll pay off in the long run. Would you say that's a common theme in like the Bay area or do you think, um, it was, you got lucky and certain people around you just kind of taught you that. No, um, it's, it's pretty much a common theme. Uh, there, there's quite a few artists in the Bay area that carry the community on their back. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, yep. I'm not sure if you're familiar with who Mr. Fab is. Um, not but... ringing a bell. I, I feel okay. like I decently know, <laughs> but I mean, there's so many artists, so. Yeah, yeah. No, he's 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 huge and he has his own retail store called Dope Era and the guy's amazing. Like he he extends opportunities to everyone for everything and then also to on a pleasure level. You know, he put mm-hmm. together Fab Week which was celebrating his birthday but he turned it into more of a thing about the community, coming out and and roller skating, bowling and and partying and just having a good time and you know, being able to um, you know, people who are, you know, on a budget, they could still come to this event and buy drinks and food without breaking the bank. But he's definitely someone who's like extremely big on uh, community support. And that's also what inspired me because I'm like, wow, this is amazing. And when you bring joy to people 
they're 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 gonna bring it back to you. So um, yeah, the um, the Bay Area is is really big on community support. Um, I know even uh, Zendaya comes mm -hmm. uh, back out to Oakland to the Bay Area and supports uh, her previous art school that she was at to you know um, help the, the you know the younger generation achieve their dreams when it comes to art. Um, a, a lot of major artists come back to the Bay and they do that. So um, that that's also what inspired me. Biggest name you've ever met? The biggest name I ever met? Yeah, like who would you say is like oh. the biggest biggest name you ever met? Okay, I'll say the first biggest name I ever met, Red Man. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 I like that. That was um. I, that's when I was doing Diva TV, the little reality show on public yep. access stations. And um, I remember this promoter contacted me and said, you know, Red Man's doing a, a release party um, at this venue. And, you know, it's going to be, you know, free samples of weed and, you know, food and drinks flowing. And so it was like a meet and greet. And I went and I remember like just seeing him walk in the building. I'm like, oh, shit, that is Red Man. <laughs> Like for real, yeah. that's a great man. Like yeah. damn, and he was just hella cool. He was very humble, and actually, I caught up with him a few, quite a few times after that. His DJ would call me and say, "Hey, does Diva TV want to come out and support Redman um, at his concert in Frisco?" You know what I mean? And we'd come and film footage, and you know, post it on YouTube and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, he he was the biggest name and probably the most humble artist that I've that's ever cool. or humble name I ever met. That's cool because, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like it's actually hard to find humble people in the entertainment industry. Yeah, it is. Like, it's so funny. Even, like, when people meet me, they're like, oh, my gosh, you're so nice. And I'm like, opposed to what? <laughs> <laughs> you like, are very you are very nice and, like, <laughs> very humble, which is, which is nice because, like I said, there are definitely some people who I think um, – can get a little arrogant or above themselves sometimes. So it's, it's cool oh, yeah. that, you know, you're still down to earth. Yeah. So it's cool. Right. I mean, we're all human. You know what I mean? No, exactly. And, exactly. We got to like, remember that though. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like who am I to act like I'm better than you? You know what I mean? Yep. Whether I have more money in my pocket or fame or whatever, like I, I bleed like you do. I cry like you do. I'm going to die like you do. You know, it's yep. just, <laughs> we're yep. all this yep absolutely yeah absolutely okay so what is your advice for aspiring artists actresses actors yes so i would say continue to hone your craft and be prepared to wear different hats in the industry and what i mean by that is if you're an artist yes you're gonna have to be your own manager for a while Yes, you're gonna have to be your own publicist. If, if you're an actor, yes, you're gonna have to be your own acting coach and find YouTube reels and educate yourself on um, learning how to memorize monologues and you know just different styles of acting. Um, you know, if, if you're a, a fashion designer, yes, you're gonna have to go out there and vend at different events, and you're gonna have to be a salesman and you know start. Uh, selling your own items and working the the cash app, the cash register, whatever you have, you know what I mean? Yeah. You have to be prepared to do as much as possible to make your career happen. And that's what's going to ultimately attract the big people because once there's a buzz going on about whatever you're doing, the next person's going to see how they can be a part and how they can contribute to enhance it and to make it bigger. So um, just be prepared to be a damn octopus. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love it. I love that analogy. Yeah. I think, like you said, um, we're continuously adapting. So I think that's that's really great advice for, for certain people. Because I think, you know, oh, I'm so different, right? When when you first get in, my, my assumption is a lot of people are like, Oh, I'm very different. I'm gonna. I want to do just this, and I. I don't think right. everyone's prepared to, uh, to adapt out and branch out to many different hats, like you said. So that's that's really good advice. Um, before we give our closing thoughts or anything, I want 
to give you a chance to plug yourself, everything you're a part of, where people can find you. Yeah, so um, I want you guys to visit my website. It's keldamusic.com. That's K-E-L-D-A-M-U-Z-I-K.com. From there, you'll find everything about the diva herself, social media, film updates, new music, TV projects I'm involved in, fashion projects. You'll be able to buy yourself a Tams on my website. So um, yeah, keldamusic.com. I want to thank you so much for having me. Um, I hope that whoever is listening to this conversation, that you take what I say seriously and that you continue to strive for success and don't let the world stop you. That's awesome. Well, Kelda Music, thank you very much for coming on. It was a pleasure having you on and learn about your journey. You're very uh, passionate, very talented individual of many different fields. So great, great interviewing you. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you for listening. Amazing.